really important to exercise our dogs, uh, especially if you have a hyperactive dog who, uh, who might have behavior problems. I, I've said this before, but it's so important to have our dogs get that outlet that they deserve, uh, especially a high energy dog. This is where the miscommunication lies between dogs and people so often. A dog becomes destructive, they tear apart furniture, uh, they, they get into the garbage, they constantly jump. These are all symptoms of a dog that is understimulated physically and mentally that needs to get that outlet. And unfortunately, some of the advice that's been given over the years is walk your dog every day, which is good for a lot of dogs, don't get me wrong. But if you have a super high energy dog, walking your dog isn't gonna do much good at all. You've gotta get out there, you've gotta teach them fetch. I tell people that all the time. The number one thing you can teach a dog, particularly a dog with a lot of energy, is fetch. Far more efficient to get them tired. It takes about an hour to an hour and a half a day, depending on your dog. I work my dogs uh, about an hour to an hour and a half a day, four to five times a week depending. Uh, it probably averages out to about that. Sometimes shorter uh, in hot weather. Those, those practices are shortened fairly significantly to 30 to 45 minutes. In cool weather, they can sometimes go two hours. Lots of breaks in between. You've got to read your dog. You can't push them too hard. I love you, buddy, but you can be a major brat when you are not tired. <laughs> Supernova, come around and go. But see, I mean, you gotta, you've got to look at what they were bred for, in particular, a lot of times. I mean, Border Collies were meant to go forever and ever herding sheep and, and working in the field. So, I mean, that's bred into them. That's the beauty of the domestic dog, Venus, go, is that they are so highly adaptable to what we ask them to do. Uh, it's not so cut in stone. They're very versatile animals, which is why they embed themselves in our society. I think, depending on how you look at it, they may be the ones domesticating us in a lot of ways because if you look at the symbiotic relationship between dogs and people, how we rely on one another, it's it's such a win-win relationship. Fetch doesn't have to be with a frisbee. A ball will do just fine. Frisbee takes a little more training. I find it to be more enjoyable. Whoa, nice catch, buddy. One of the biggest mistakes I think people make during fetch also is that they are so unengaging and so uninteresting. You know, having that energy up is, uh, is important. Let me give you an example. And you can see, what Nova does is he'll start and then he'll change his mind. Now, sometimes it could be because he's tired, but I know him well enough to know the difference between when he's tired and when he's just kind of getting bored with the game. All right, Nova, go. Right there, see, come around. He starts to come around, I say go, and he's like, nah, this isn't as interesting anymore. I'm kind of bored now. Now, that's not his fault. We can't, because mo what most people will say here is, oh, my dog just isn't interested in, in playing fetch. No, it, it's in all likelihood, ag again, I'm talking about higher energy dogs for the most part. I mean, some dogs are just chill. And, you know, if you take your stereotypical Basset Hound, for example, no, they have no interest in playing Frisbee. Uh, some do, some do. You can't stereotype. Remember, that's one of the big problems in dog training today is the over-stereotyping of breeds, which is why I try and do it very little. Um, so, what I do with Nova, when he's at that point, when I know he's got it in him and he's just getting bored, I've got to make it more interesting for him. So I'm going to pick up my tone a little bit and try and get more exciting, you know? But it's genuine. It's not fake. Because I really want him to succeed. Okay, Nova, get it. Come on, get it, get it. I'll play a little tug with the frisbee there. Good, let go. Good. Like this. Maybe I'll run with him a bit. Go, Nova, go. And you know, and it get, he feeds off that energy. So that's really, really important. Venus, on the other hand, never gets bored. Venus, go. It's kind of like when we have that high energy dog, uh, the traditional advice has been to fight it. You have a dog that jumps on you, so try and get them to be calm by, by being really stern and really strict with them or something like that, rather than embracing that energy and giving them that natural outlet that they so want and deserve. Last time I checked, we don't bring dogs into our life so we can make them miserable and calm. We bring them into our life to make our lives better, but if we're going to ask them to make our lives better, we've got to make their lives better. I mean, that's just basic karma. You scratch my back, I scratch yours. That's what the relationship is all about. And when we try and overrule that, well, we're just messing with nature. The solution that's been offered for so long to prevent hyperactivity is to use treats somehow. And I, you know, I mean, 
A hyper dog doesn't want treats. A hyper dog wants to play. That's what they want. Let's give it to them and let's put structure to it. And we'll have super trained dogs all over the world. It's common sense. And it's something that if we just did more as a culture, we would have such fewer problems out there. Anyway, leave your uh, comments below, questions, anything you want to add to the conversation. Also, my Facebook page, facebook.com slash thezachgeorge. Uh, leave your questions there as well. You have to click like, I think, to be able to do that. So make sure you do like me over there. Spread the word. The revolution continues.